I'm doing here now is I'm putting the uh, door skin, this original door skin back up here. This is the one that uh, is my master. You know, we did the transfer of the lines for the um, door handle. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, when I was saying put down as much information as you can because you might need it. Uh, we, in this case, we need it, so we're able to line this up. We know this is center of the handle from our, um, when we put the scribe line on there from our other door before we even cut it off. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is I've got to put a notch right here for the lower hinge. And what I'm going to do is this is just going to be uh, a preliminary notch that I can cut where I can slide the door panel onto the frame itself. The hinge notches are super critical. If they're too big, you got too much gap around them and you have to go back. You'll have to go back, fill it, recut it. Because you don't want to have too big of a gap, but you want to be sure that you have enough gap. So if there's any flex, you don't want that hinge to kiss the door skin after it's painted. Because if that door skin, that hinge comes around and sticking up and it doesn't have enough gap between the, the hinge you'll, when you'll see when we draw it. If that thing flexes and it just barely touches that that door skin, it's gonna it puts a wrinkle in it. So if you see a bunch of doors and a wrinkle right here, that's why. I'm gonna leave my line um, that way when we start fitting it to the inner door frame. If I need to grind some off one way or the other, I can. But if I cut it too big, I'm gonna have to go back in there and weld it all up and and start over. And I really don't want to do that. Okay, so we have our old Clico holes from our door top. And it's telling me that it needs to go that way. So that's telling me that that door hinge needs to be opened up a little bit, allow this thing to swing just a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start marking this with um, a ruler. And always, I set it up against the hinge And when that's all trimmed nice, it gives you about a hundred thousandths gap around your hinge, which is good. Um, probably the single, you know, there's a lot to doing all these, to doing this, putting on door skins and and all the steps, and it's. A lot of thinking ahead of, okay, I'm going to do this, but I got to do this. What's going? What am I going to be doing later? You know, when it comes to putting in glass, uh, putting in rubber, putting in upholstery, uh, latches, and everything. Where am I going to need clearance? Where am I going to need, say, an extra tab where I'm going to, where I know I'm going to put a screw? Thinking it way ahead, as far as you can think ahead, because it's just so much easier to. Take a few extra, do a few extra things when this door skin's off than it is when after the door skin's on. Like for instance, you know, this thing, I'm gonna get the inner door, inner door frame powder coated before the skin goes on to protect it and to keep it from rusting or, or, and having any issues. But before we put the door skin on, we're gonna put our dynamat on the inside of the door skin. Instead of trying to fish it behind all that X bracing and everything we're doing, we're gonna go ahead and put the We'll put the dynamat on the door skin before we put the door skin on the frame. So these are our lines, you know, that we're going to trim to. But I don't want a square line, so I just take a round file, and I'm going to file till I touch the two lines. 
And then when I trim it, it won't be square, it'll have a slight radius to it. We've been fitting our door skin to our frames. I have two Clecos in the original Clecos that hold the top where it's supposed to be. Um, we took our ruler, this is 100 thousandths thick. We got our clearance around our top hinge evenly all the way around. And then also down here on the bottom, and you can see by these lines that are on the panel, this one right here, this is how we snuck up on it to be sure it fits, to just cutting a big hole so we didn't have to go back and weld it up if we cut it too much. But this is our very first line and it's at least a quarter of an inch away from where the final line wound up being. So you can see the, the first line, that's where we cut it and then we laid our scribe, or you know, then we scribed it again, kept sneaking up on it till the door skin came around, all the Clecos lined up and everything got real happy. And so now using this hundred thousandths ruler for feeler gauge we got a hundred thousandths clearance here and here and here our beads line up good here good here then we're going to talk about different ways of making uh, a flanged edge uh, when I started off doing it I used just a uh, bead roller you know you can do the pliers bead roller pull max flanging machine and there's some good videos on the on YouTube right now Ron Covell has a great video on how to do flanges so there's a lot of information on turning flanges flanges are something you run into all the time whether it be turning it for a door skin or you're going around a corner making a box or recessing a firewall there's always a flange in there so there's a lot of good information out there on how to make flanges anyway so I'm gonna take this apart and we'll dock them it up and then we'll we'll put it back together and scribe it and go from there the reason i put the heavy shop bag in the middle before i start clamping it down is to push any tension of the door skin out so i want this thing to be tight on the frame just use a few duckbill clamps where i can get them on there um, so i don't uh, I don't want to put any impressions on the door skin. So we're all clamped up. We got our we're docking on the other side. We're going to use this uh, edge here for our scribe for our flange. We're going to put a 3/8 flange on this thing. That's about all the room we have. Um, I'm going to use my flanging machine, so I'm going to put the uh, dies in it, the 3/8 flanging dies. We're going to run a little test sample. And that'll tell us uh, where the brake line is on the die, so that'll give us the correct amount of space that we need to scribe for our flange. Okay, so the way we're going to flange our panel is we're going to use this Urco flanging machine. Um, it's a machine that was built, this one was built in 1954. I got it about 20 years ago and restored it. This right here is, is one of the tools, and uh, the way it works is the height of your die is determined by the space between here where it bends and the end of the finger. So like that. So all it's going to do is bend it in that radius right there, see? This right here is a 3 eighths, but I've got them from quarter inch all the way up to inch and a quarter. You can see the different, that how de deep it would go. Okay. So what this machine does is as it goes through its cycle, it raises up just slightly, just very slightly, enough for you to slide under, to slide your part, and then it clamps back down. And then there's another tool, the bucking tool on the back side, comes up and hits it and starts bumping it up and, and standing it up on this flange. The reason that's arced, the reason that's arced is that allows that to stay consistent all the way through travel of, of till you get you know and you can stock your flange if you just want to go to that angle you can this angle we're gonna go all the way 90 and the way that's done 
is there's a handle here in front that you spin and it raises raises and lowers the um, amount of action on the on the breaker breaker part of the die that comes up see it comes all the way up goes all the way down and if you'll notice as this is coming down you've got your piece in there it comes down and it squeezes it now it's super tight okay and so then it will come up and of course I'm just bumping it with my foot to give you an idea of what it does and it lets it go and it lets it go and it lets it go lets it go and then squeezes it and comes back up and that's just going through a cycle you can see how it's already starting to make a nice flange right here there's the bend line uh, so if I turn it on then I want to raise this up some more So as you can see, this thing made a super nice crisp flange. Look at that brake line right there, super crisp. Cool thing is, not only does it do sheet metal, it'll do it'll do uh, up to 3 16 inch plate. And I've made uh, frame rails um, using this machine. This machine also doesn't just, as you'll see when we do the door skin, it just doesn't go in a straight line. It'll go around curves and S's and everything. That's what's the so bitching about it. It's, because you know you could break that straight in a, on a sheet metal brake like over there it's fine but you know if you got a inside curve or outside curve this thing will follow it all the way around so uh, this is just the sweet way of making flanges we want a 3 8 3 8 of an inch tall flange but what we're concerned about is the inside how deep is it how tall is it that's 475 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 3 8 um, die in here run a sample on this other side and see how tall it is and then that'll tell me how much I need to trim my panel so it breaks it exactly where I want it to break
you can see we got our uh, board flanged. Um, we got it held on with uh, the two original Clecos that we had. Flange goes over real nice around the door, all the way around. It's nice and snug, so it's ready to be hemmed over. So I'm gonna replace this flange and this flange here and here. All I'm gonna do is take a piece of sheet metal, bend it 90 with a 3 8 flange, and just put it on in the spots I need. What we'll do is we'll cut a strip that's that shape, and then we'll actually do some edge welding to finish out the flanges. We'll also do that on the flange here. Tomorrow after we get all this other stuff done, we'll pull it apart and we'll send the inner frame out to get powder coated, as well as the uh, inside of the um, door skin. And then we'll be able to put it all back together, spot weld it, be done with it. Fold the flanges and uh, be ready to go on the car.